I mean, I have a you know I have a Dodge you know Challenger Hellcat. I love the way that thing sounds. <laughs> I love that when you hit it, you feel it. Personally, I think it's going the way of diesel or electric. What are your thoughts on electric and diesel in the future? Do you think that's the way it's going? Do you think that's the way these vehicles are going to be in 10, 15 years from now? I don't know when the time frame is, but I'm a dinosaur. Like, I believe this. I believe all the people who control the, the oil right now, once the last drop comes out of the ground, they'll control all the electric or whatever we use at that point. I think people want to go green. I get why. I understand it. But I believe there's so much money in oil <laughs> that I think we're going to be running you know, I mean, combustion engines, whether they be diesel or gasoline, for a very long time. I mean, until there's nothing left. I mean, I'm not saying that there won't be more electric. There will be more electric. I mean, I'm sure of that. I mean, you see there's more and more hybrids, more and more of this and that. I just don't see it happening the way people think it's going to happen. I'm not, and I, and I still, what I don't see, maybe, and maybe they'll figure it out, I still don't see the battery technology. I don't see it. The battery still weighs so much, and I keep I'd be hearing how, uh, what's a, what's a, what's a cool car? The guy that makes the rockets. Tesla. Tesla. Or what's his name? Uh, you know, Tesla. Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know, hear about Tesla. Those are really cool cars, you know, especially the Type S. Really cool car. He said he's going to make a truck, an 18-wheeler. Right, and, and I'm sure he can do it. I mean, I've seen things like that. That's great. But when you got to move heavy weight, and see, I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to this because I don't do my, I don't I haven't done a lot of research on electric, but I, I just can't see how the rich, rich people in the world who own the oil are going to let that happen, unless we're going to run a bunch of other things on oil. And I know we use oil for everything, from making plastics to, you know, yeah. all kinds of things. So maybe they will, but I just think if, if I'm one of those big oil companies, I'm like, man, these electric cars are really not a good thing for us. You know, we, we, we really need, you know, some diesel and some gasoline cars to still be out on the road. So I still think, I don't know if I'll see it in my day. I think someday it will be like mm -hmm. that. Um, I mean, when you look at, look at the way you run a train, right? Take a diesel engine, you make electricity, and you drive some electric motors that pull a train. Obviously, there's enough power, right? Because a train just works off electric motors. Yeah. You know? Pretty amazing. It could pull a train. So there's plenty of power there. There's plenty. But at the same time, that same train takes a huge diesel engine to turn mm -hmm. a generator to make that kind of power. So at what point will the battery technology catch up? And like I said, I could come across really ignorant right now because I don't know. I just see every electric car that I've seen or even hybrid situations that we kind of had to work on. We don't do a lot. You look at those batteries, you're like, gosh, that's a gang of weight that's in this car, yeah. you know, and then the whole thing of, you know, will people buy off? And I mean, I don't drive more than 100 miles a day, so I mean, if the car went 100, I mean, I charge it at home or whatever, it makes sense to me. But at the same time, when our generation dies, I mean, I know I'm a little bit older than you, but when our generation dies, I mean, I have a, you know, I have a Dodge, you know, Challenger Hellcat. I love the way that thing sounds. <laughs> I love that when you hit it, you feel it. And I'm sure if you race that, I think they did a thing where they raced the Tesla and my car, and I think the Tesla, Tesla could beat it, it, right? But it doesn't make, it's nothing. For, I don't want an electric car. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? You like, hear that? No, you don't. Right. There's nothing to hear. Right, right. My, my son's generation, on the other hand, I mean, he's all in. I mean, he's all in. His car that he wants to get is a Tesla, and he believes that we all should be on electric, and that there's... But you he know. hugs trees. Yes, he does. He went to Berkeley. <laughs> he went to Berkeley, and he's smart. So the dumb guys like me that aren't educated, we love that petrol burning. With that uh, horsepower. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's there's no savings anymore buying an electric car. The only way, yeah. <laughs> really? Really, that's a so huge So what is it? Is it a status symbol? No, I think it's, it's myth. I shouldn't say myth. It's something that's stuck around from the last few years. Initially, there was because there was huge incentives. By the way, this doesn't count to people who have solar. People who have solar, um, they can get free electricity in essence yeah. if they've got enough panels to provide their usage. Um, but it's just myth that stuck around, I think. Initially, it was cheaper. Companies gave discounts to people, those that have electric vehicles. Uh, now the electric vehicle plan, seems like you're gonna get a, a big discount where you're paying uh, 13 cents a kilowatt and the electricity company says, okay, at nighttime, we'll knock that 13 down to seven. So you charge a lot cheaper. 
but during the day, we're gonna take that 13 and bump it up to 19. Yeah, that just happened in California. Yeah, so for me, I personally opted out of the charging cycle because I have my pool and jacuzzi that need to be running during the day, uh, you know, keep things clean. So I'll save money at night, but it's gonna cost me more during the day. So, do you have solar? No. Okay. Yeah, I plan to, but I wanna do it myself, and that's. Do that's you really? What, oh, yeah. It doesn't seem too difficult. The, the thing that has held me back for so long is pulling the permits to get it on the roof. But fortunately, I've got a friend who's a contractor. We're gonna scratch each other's backs. I'm gonna help him with his install, and he'll pull the permits. He'll pull the permits for me. I'll do the install. And All right. From what I've seen, solar seems very simple. Very, you know, it's not as elaborate as people say. You see another company starting, you're gonna start another company installing solar? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I love the idea, my passion's not there though. Yeah. Do you think Tesla's gonna make it as a company? My personal opinion, I really do. They're, they're great business people. You know, they're building a huge infrastructure. Um, they're revolutionizing things. I mean, going from a regular car to a Tesla mm -hmm. is like going from a flip phone to an iPhone. It's it's revolutionary, best car I've, you go I've ever had. I love, I still love all the other hybrids, the Priuses, the Volts and stuff, but it's my preference. Um, have you seen, uh, what's his name, Rich Rebuilds on, on YouTube? Have you seen that guy? Absolutely. Where he's basically hacking Teslas and... Mm -hmm trying to get into the systems and trying to rebuild them for people and Tesla's not being really compliant with him as far as parts or service or technical bulletins or anything like that. Yeah. Do you think that's fair, unfair as far as Tesla holding that information back? Oh, absolutely unfair. I mean, it's it's destructive to the free market. They need competition. Okay. Uh, just like everyone does. But if you need something like my own, my own Tesla had a problem. My entire screen went blank. Uh, you know, going on the, the internet, seeing rough prices, Tesla was 2500 to get it fixed. Uh, all I had to do was replace a, a circuit board smaller than my cell phone, and it brought it back up. Labor took, took me less than an hour to do. You did it here in the shop? Mm-hmm. How'd you get the part? Uh, I got it from another one that was crashed. They, they won't sell anything to me. Like, okay, oh, sorry, so you got to go They find won't sell it. anything. There's very specific parts they won't sell because of safety. So you had to go find one, crashed one, yeah. eBay? Uh, no, I had a connection. Okay. He was able to set me up, told him exactly what was going on, helped me out, and, and got it going. But I feel they need competition. Uh, bring the prices down. They're refusing to release software so that other people are not able to service it. Um, at least that's my understanding of it. Just kind of unfair to the market. Yeah, absolutely. You're, it, it's monopolized. When something's going wrong, you got to go to Tesla. If they want, you know, ten thousand dollars to fix Part A, you don't have any other options. You got to go with with what they say. There are a few people that are rising, like Rich Rebuilds. And I believe there's another guy in Berkeley. I can't remember his name now. Uh, they're bringing a lot of attention to it, and I, I love that. I think the more attention that Tesla gets on it, the more likely they are to open up their software to the, the general public, you know, shops like us. Do you see in the future Electron Automotive being a full Tesla shop as well? Uh, I wouldn't, full Tesla in regards to specializing on them exclusively, no. Service, absolutely. Okay. Um, we're already performing a lot of the services now, but we're locked out of a lot of other things because of the lack of software. You know, anything that requires a firmware update or a reflash, we're not able to do at the moment. When that do you have computers that will talk to it, see it, or? I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe, not, maybe not. <laughs> not on the level that I would like. It's very primitive. Okay. Um, but yes. Have you heard that OBD3 is coming out soon? Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about that for a while. I've heard 2021, 20, 22. Okay. But I don't I, know anything. There's very, very little information about it on the internet. I've tried looking it up, but I don't know. Just Yeah, there's, there's been talk about it for a while. I'm always excited for new technology. You right? love it or what? Oh, Embrace absolutely. it, yeah? Absolutely. That's, that's what we're all about here, all the things. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the carburetors and stuff that I hate, but... A lot of that probably has to do with my inability to work on them. So. <laughs> well, there's a lot of, I know we, we wrote that down, but there's a lot of, um, I don't know what you want to call it, misinformation about being killed by these batteries. Absolutely. They, and, these batteries, 
oh, they are dangerous. They do have a high voltage, which can, can hurt you, but they're so simple to deactivate. Once you deactivate it, the chances of getting electrocuted are very, very slim. Uh, I have had zero instances here, and I taught at a college for five years, and we had zero instances there. As long as you're very you know, strict about removing the safety plug, which most batteries, you can't even open them without removing the safety plug. Uh, you know, most cases you'll be just fine. I'm not going to say every case because there's always going to be that one guy out there. Yeah. <laughs> but I personally do not consider them as dangerous as the general public does. Okay. Even when they're, because at your other shop across the street, there's batteries that were open, the cases were away from them. They're safe in that state as well. Absolutely. We have a strict rule. Every safety plug comes out of the battery before the battery comes in the facility, and they all go in a bucket. We do have to insert the safety plug during some of our testing process, but the technicians understand the systems very well. They understand potential danger, and they know to remove it as soon as the, the test has been finished. Okay. So there's not very much of a risk of killing yourself? Very little, especially if you follow our procedures. <laughs>